Welcome to Selling Tri-Cities, where we are selling more than homes. This project was created to share our love and passion for this beautiful part of the country that we are lucky enough to call home. We want to showcase the small businesses, the entrepreneurs, and the beauty that makes the Appalachian Highlands one of the most desirable markets in the nation. But most importantly, we want to introduce you to the people that make this area such a wonderful place to live. So join us as we sell you on our love for the Tri-Cities. Hello and welcome to another episode of Selling Tri-Cities, where we are selling more than homes um, with just me today, Aubrey Tellerico. I'm sorry you're stuck with just me. My co-host, Greg Peckman, is actually out of town, but that is okay because today we are focusing on some women's health, um, and so we kind of gave him the boot anyways. Um, but today I'm joined with Dr. Noelle Eads. Um, she is a doctor of physical therapy, and so um, she is also the co-founder um, of Impassion Pelvic Health. Um, and so we're going to talk about things that sometimes people just don't want to talk about today. So, and yeah. actually should be talking about. Yes. Um, so to kind of get started, I want to talk more about your background first. Yeah. Um, and kind of how, how you started, where you went to school, um, why this became a passion for you. And then I want to talk about the business. I want to talk about um, all the services that you guys provide um, and how you guys are really helping our community. Yeah, thanks. We're excited to be here. Um, so I am a doctor of physical therapy, but I have a specialty in pelvic floor therapy or pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, and so my partner and I, Melanie, we've been physical therapists for nine years. We both graduated from ETSU. Yeah. We actually have a pretty cool story. We were classmates, and okay. then we've worked at every job we've ever been at together. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. So, and you worked at Sofa yes. before. Yep. So you guys worked together there too. Okay. Yes. So we um, were in. We started off with a corporation and got a lot of training in both orthopedic and pelvic health physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to receive a ton of training, but we just got a little bit burnout with a lot of the high volume issues, like just a lot of the stuff you see in kind mm -hmm. of the fast paced corporate healthcare world, not mm -hmm. just physical therapy, kind of in yeah. general. Um, and so we went off on our own with, um, we were under a chiropractor for a little bit and then started the program at State of Franklin. Okay. Um, and then just kind of got to a point, kind of similar stuff, just really wanting to provide quality and then just feeling frustrated with a little bit of the limitations in care. A lot of that was due just to kind of like structure also some insurance yeah. issues things like that and you know after nine years you just get to a point where you're just ready to kind of do it on your own mm -hmm. um and so we started in passion we opened our doors last august mm -hmm. um and so we've been in the johnson city community doing pelvic health for about five or six years together mm -hmm. i had been previously in knoxville and memphis and a couple other locations yeah. um but in august we started and we're actually downtown in the taylor building mm -hmm. And so we were able to find a private um, space. It has a gym space and three private treatment rooms. And so we actually have already brought on a third therapist. And right. so we've grown really quickly, which is really exciting, um, to the point we're actually looking at hiring a fourth PT. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and so we do with pelvic floor physical therapy, that's kind of the big thing. A lot of people are like, what the heck is that? I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a specialized yes. field. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's, that's a lot of, I mean, people just don't really, I mean, honestly, until I met you, which, I, you know, I was lucky enough to meet you years ago, which is wonderful. But until I met you, it wasn't something that I really even I guess, knew about or, you know, and I'm a, I'm a female. Um, and so I think it's something that people are just maybe not as aware of, um, as far as like service provider yes. and like healthcare providing. And, um, I think a lot of women probably also struggle with it and don't yes. know and pay attention to it. So I'm really glad that you're here to kind of talk about it, but, yeah. um, why, why, pelvic health like why did you specialize in that yeah so it's funny my story is a little different than Melanie's Melanie has four kids mm -hmm. she you know has kind of been invested in women's health from the get-go just through motherhood and things like that yeah. for me I went to school thinking that I wanted to do pediatrics mm -hmm. and I got into my rotation and I absolutely just didn't love it <laughs> um I just, me. I just don't have the creative brain that's needed for pediatric rehab it's yeah. very creative play um not as structured and the therapists that do it are wonderful and it just it didn't click with me as mm -hmm. well as I thought it would 
Um, and so I discovered pelvic health in one of my clinical rotations and just absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. And then my mom at the same time was going through some issues, some complications after a hysterectomy. And so to be able to kind of help her with that while I was learning all of that stuff, just kind of sealed the deal. And it's something, it's very rewarding. Yeah. It, a lot of the conditions we see are really complex, severe, debilitating for women, embarrassing for women. And so to be mm-hmm. able to you know, help a woman have pain-free sex again or stop peeing on herself is just a lot more rewarding than like rehabbing an ankle sprain. No, I completely agree. It's about, it's a confidence level that you can reinstill in women. And I feel like since you have started this, even when you were at, you know, SOFA before, um, I know that you have helped several uh, women that I know now. And I think you kind of being out in the community and people knowing you and you kind of being so open to talk about it and talk about yeah. what you do, um, has you've been able to help a lot of people that I know. Um, and so I feel like there are women who are starting to speak up a little bit more about it um, and I think is wonderful. Um, so let's talk more about then actual pelvic floor health. What type of patients do you typically, like who are your typical patients? I mean, I know it's probably a wide variety of them. We actually treat men, women, and children. And so we just, speaking of pediatrics, that is not my forte. We do have a pediatric pelvic health therapist now. Um, women are definitely our more dominant patient population, especially around like pregnancy and postpartum. But what we do really is whole body therapy. We just have a concentration in pelvic health. And so when we say pelvic health, really it it's more women's health and then total body dysfunction that can affect the pelvic floor. So we treat a lot of our big major conditions are like urinary incontinence, constipation, sexual dysfunction. So painful sex is a huge one for us. That's not talked about dealt with all the time. Mm -hmm. Women think it's normal. It's not like before pregnancy, if you've never had a baby after pregnancy, like sex should never be painful. Yeah. Um, it's, it all should be arousing. It should be yeah. something you enjoy, not something you dread or hate or don't feel anything during. And so there's a lot of rehab options yeah. for that. Um, we also treat during pregnancy. We do orthopedic pain. A lot of women expect pain with pregnancy, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm pregnant. My back's going to hurt. And yeah. that's not necessarily true. Okay. And so we do orthopedic management. We do labor so like and sciatic, like mm-hmm. sciatica and things yep. like that to kind of help with that. That's yep. wonderful. Pubic pain, sciatic issues, but even that's where it's like, even like neck pain, anything oh, wow. head to toe that okay. women deal with during pregnancy, we can treat. Okay. Um, we do like abdominal rehab, postpartum, like diastasis, which is separation of the abdominals. We mm-hmm. rehab core, mm-hmm. um, any issues with delivery. Like if you have tearing or a C-section, we do scar management and then just like helping women get back to normal function yeah. after they have a baby. Cool. Um, Goodness yeah, gracious. I did not know that it was, yes. you guys did all of that. I'm like, I could have gone to you for this yes. and for this yes. and for this. Well, and that's, and that's kind of why we want to talk about it more yeah. because so many people think, oh, pelvic floor therapy, it's like Kegels and leakage. And that's all we yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, listen, I might pee a little bit every time I sneeze Yeah, or get yeah. on a trampoline with my kids, but <laughs> yeah. you don't like and, think about all the other things that, you know, we also I mean, deal with all the time and like, yeah. especially like C-section mamas. Um, you know, I had, I had two C-sections, you know, lots of people have had C-sections and just the abdominal, you know, um, separation and all that. I mean, just trying to do a crunch again was, yeah. Took and a couple of years. Yeah. And so. even like the ability to do them and do them correctly to not cause problems. Yeah. And then even like talking about the leakage, so many people think, oh, like it's normal to leak when you jump on a trampoline after you have kids. Like that's just part of it. Yeah. But it's like, you should not be leaking yeah. at all. Like even a couple drops ever. So I need um, to come see you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and like, and so like from a research standpoint, yeah. one in three women have pelvic floor dysfunction. I was going like, to ask you like what the studies are mm-hmm. for, I mean, that is, that is crazy. 33% of women. Yeah. Um, and how many people, how many of those do you feel like you probably treat? Um, not many. So they, so we did some research numbers. And so with one in three with us census, that's about 20 million women in the U.S. that have pelvic floor dysfunction. And because pelvic floor therapy is so specialized, there's about 10,000 pelvic floor PTs in the nation. Like it's a pretty rare field. So the need is huge, but the population is super underserved, but a lot of it is lack of awareness. And so just feeling like you have to deal with these issues because that, oh, you had a baby. Like that's just the way it is now. Yeah. 
Um, and so one of the huge things that we're passionate about is like, no, it's not normal. You don't have to deal with it. You can treat it. And you also shouldn't wait till it's out of control. Another research stat is that women on average wait six and a half years from first onset of symptoms to tell anybody about urinary bowel or sexual issues. Because they're like, oh, it's just a little bit of leakage that one time. Yeah. But then it gets worse, and then now they're in pads every day. Yeah. Or they're wearing pads just in case. And that's another stat. Women, on average, spend almost $1,000 annually on I was going to say, depends, I'm sure. It's mm-hmm. just wrapping yeah. up their pads money when and they can just be. And yeah. it's like, when, why do that when you can fix it? Yeah. And so it's just stuff for us that we're just so passionate about outreach about. Because mm-hmm. it's like, don't be okay with dealing with this stuff. Yeah. I love so. that. So what are some things, like if you, I mean, right now you're talking to, you know, talking to your audience here, yeah. but what are some things that you would tell women to to look for? If you yeah. feel like these are issues or symptoms that you are kind of dealing with, you know, call us right now. Yeah. So normal urinary function is going to the bathroom to, vo- to void or pee every two to four hours. So okay. if you're peeing more frequently than every two hours, um, if you are holding it excessively past four hours, you should never be leaking with coughing, laughing, sneezing, jumping on the trampoline. Yep. You should also never be leaking with urgency. You should never have urgency that's so bad that you're like, oh my God, I need to know where every single bathroom in Johnson City is at. Or like be shoving people out okay. of the way to get to the bathroom. Like you should never have a concern that you're not going to make it. Um, okay. So that's kind of on a urinary end. You also should never feel like you're not emptying all the way when you go. Mm-hmm. You should never feel like you have to go right back to the bathroom after you went. Yeah. Okay. Um, you should never have any kind of pelvic pain, like pelvic pressure sensations, pain with sex, pain with urination or bowel movements. With even constipation is a huge thing that we treat. That uh, That's another thing people just think is like part of life, to be constipated. Yeah. Oh. Constipation is the number one condition that people see primary care for, like in their adult years and actually in their pediatric years as well. And yeah. pediatric yeah. constipation is something that we treat, and it is there's such a need for it. Like most most I kids agree, get yes. Miralax. They're like, yes. oh, let's take Miralax. But it is so treatable with physical therapy. And the other research with a lot of that is that kids that deal with urinary and bowel issues in childhood will typically carry that into adulthood and have those Because they don't know how to, Mm -hmm. they're just used to taking like Miralax or putting some a school softener and then they're actually not figuring out how to handle, like teaching their body how to handle that itself. I think that there's so many kids, I mean, I, I would say seven out of my 10 you know, mom friends, their kids at one point or another went, dealt with the constipation yeah. thing. Um, it is so common, but yeah, they're talking to their pediatrician. It's just yep. certain food that they're trying to tell them to take or Miralax or some stool yeah. softeners, but um, haven't ever really considered going yeah, to the therapy route, not even knowing that was an option. Yeah. And that's another thing the pediatric world within public health is just now really growing, yeah. but now that there's a lot of research out there and support for it, like we're our pediatric therapist, her name is Whitney, mm-hmm. and she is she does a blend, so she treats adults and pediatrics. But what she's seeing in kids is like it is so treatable, and oftentimes it's just a few visits to get things under control, and then wow. kids are going to the bathroom normally. We also treat delayed potty training, so kids okay on average should be potty trained by ages like four to five. Mm -hmm. Um, And so if they're not, there are a lot of times issues there. We also treat recurrent UTIs in kids um, and then bedwetting. And so that's, there's like just such a huge need. And once again, it's so treatable. And even with going into the women's health conditions, and we also treat male pelvic health, men can develop very similar. They have the same muscles. They just have different external anatomy that was my next yeah. question was like you know you mentioned you also treat you know the male anatomy so what you know how does yeah. that so males we treat pelvic pain okay. so a lot of men that have pelvic floor muscle dysfunction they will develop like penile pain testicular pain rectal pain so we yeah. treat all of that we treat abdominal pain urinary issues men oftentimes if they have a prostate removal they'll develop urinary incontinence Okay. And so we do urinary rehab, like pre and post op, um, a lot of different, a lot of it's pain disorders for men, yeah. but, and it's something for men that is very, 
I would say for women, it's becoming less taboo to talk about this stuff. For men, it's even more taboo yeah. because we you just don't want to talk about that yeah. stuff. Um, and that's something, too, that we see a lot of. And it's just also very treatable. Yeah. So, I, one, I learned so much about what, I mean, all the services you provide. Um, but let's talk about kind of like the business side of things. Yeah. You know, so branching out and starting your own business. I know you talked about... Um, you know, some of the limitations you can get from the corporate world. So being able, I know a lot of physical therapists who have decided to, in different, you know, specialties have decided to start their own because of insurance and uh, limitations there and their ability to properly treat their, their patients. Um, but I also know that there are some cons that come with starting yeah. your own business. Yes. So talk to me about what it was like um, to get the courage to, to start your yeah. own business and the pros and... Some cons. It was scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coming from like a salaried position my yeah. whole career to a business, um, we knew how to do the clinical. And so the business side was like, what the heck? So yeah. we were really fortunate to find a mentorship, a business mentorship program. Okay. Yes. So I've we actually heard just went. This. A friend of mine yes. did it too. Um, yeah. So And so ours clinical. is specific to pelvic health. Um, mm-hmm. It's a pelvic floor therapist out in California. We actually just went out there for a business retreat and okay. it was wonderful. But they started a pelvic floor therapy program out there seven years ago. And she's one of the top pelvic floor therapists in the nation. Okay. And so her and her husband have been very passionate about healthcare clinicians that want to start their own practice unit sustainably. Um, and so teaching us the business side of things so that we can be successful and sustainable. And so we've been enrolled in that program. And that's really, I think, paved the way for a lot of our growth and being able to skip a lot of the hurdles that we would mm-hmm. be like muddling through because we yeah. had no idea. But it's definitely been interesting. What I have learned is the clinical aspect is just such a small piece of the business as a whole, but we want the clinical piece to be what stands out in terms of like providing the highest quality care that Mm -hmm. we can, but there's just literally not enough hours in a day to do all the things. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you guys open nine days a week. Um, we are open. (laughs) Yes. 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 Nine days a week from 12 to 12. Yeah. Um, but it's been great and it's been that program I think has saved our lives, but it's also been really fun and kind of refreshing to learn that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and so at this point, Melanie and I both are kind of part clinical, part administrative. And so that way we can still do both and treat patients and still get that reward and that the satisfaction, but then also grow the business because our ultimate goal, there's such a need. Our goal is to grow a service to just meet that need. And like, I'm only one person and we do 60 minute treatment sessions. So I can treat one patient an hour. That's not a lot of patients when yeah. you think about how many women, men, children yeah. need these services. So I would much rather grow a sustainable practice and hire and train therapists to deliver the same care so we can just continue to grow to meet the need. And so. you'll probably have to, I mean, I guess the spaces and stuff will grow too. I mean, if you guys are growing that rapidly just since August, which is so amazing because yeah. people in this area are realizing that there is somebody to help them. Yes. And that also these these issues are issues that can be corrected and fixed yeah. with help. Um, so that means you'll have to yeah. grow. And Yes. Well, and that's the other thing with pelvic health. It is very one of the other reasons we really wanted to do this ourselves and why a lot of pelvic health therapists are moving in this direction of like private clinician owned is because in order to be treated correctly, it needs to be done very well and very specifically. Yeah. And in a lot of those fast-paced healthcare environments, you're treating multiple patients an hour. Mm-hmm. And these conditions are very private. Like, you don't want to be in a big gym, in an orthopedic gym with, like, four other people talking about how you pee on yourself or how sex hurts. Yeah. And so where we do the one-on-one 60-minute sessions and we can do things just very effectively and efficiently. And we also are – we have – We've been fortunate to have a ton of training under our belts, but we're also just really trying to provide really high quality training for all our therapists. And so if you have had pelvic floor therapy and haven't had success, you need to look at what the clinical environment was. Like, were you being seen by your therapist for 10 minutes? Were you actually getting like quality one-on-one? Were you getting the time of that therapist? Was that therapist well-trained? Were you getting 
thorough assessment. So we actually are trained in internal pelvic floor treatment. So we do both vaginal and rectal treatments if they're appropriate. Okay. And there are a lot of therapists. We don't do it with everybody. And we also educate very thoroughly on that process. But there are some pelvic floor therapists out there that say that they do pelvic floor therapy, but they don't know how to do an internal treatment. And so then you're missing like half the piece of the puzzle if you don't know what's actually going on yeah. with those And it'll muscles. take much longer to... Yeah. or you won't get better at all. And in some situations yeah. get worse. And so that's the other thing, like it's just, it's a very specialized field. And if it's Mm -hmm. not done well, it can be not great for people. And so we really are passionate about that quality aspect too. I love that. So um, insurance, I know you had talked about, are you guys, do you guys treat patients that don't have insurance? Do you bill insurance? What is that kind of like just for people? So we are out of network specialists. So what that means for us is patients can still use their insurance, but we're not restricted by it. Because insurance looks at pelvic floor physical therapy just like regular PT, the reimbursements are, we struggle with reimbursements. And so that's why you find PTs treating like three and four patients an hour. Also, we get a lot of denials on the conditions or they'll say like, insurance will say like, oh, you have chronic painful sex that you've had for seven years. We'll give you four visits to fix that. Like just a lot of just... Yeah. And then we have to fight with insurance and then patients like wouldn't be able to come until we heard back from insurance, which could take weeks. Like it's just a lot of limitations with that. Yeah. So out of network essentially means that we have flat rates we collect on the front end, but we give patients super bills through our EMR that they can then submit for reimbursement. Okay. And so then it just goes towards out of network benefits. So whether that be a deductible, deductible coinsurance, we have a lot of patients that get really decent reimbursements back. And then you can also use HSA, FSA, stuff like that. Okay. So you can use HSAs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So how can somebody contact you? Yeah. Um, What are the best ways, like, you know, website, email, or uh, phone? How can they contact you guys to set up an appointment? All of the above. And so the nice thing is in the state of Tennessee in 2020, they changed regulations about referrals. So you do not need a referral to come to physical therapy. Okay. Which is wonderful. Which is wonderful. We can actually treat for three months before we need to consult with the physician and we take care of that process for patients. Okay. So we can message the doctors and be like, hey, this patient's So they don't seen. have to go to their family med, you know, family doctor, yes. then wait for the referral, then get sent to you, then yes. the whole process. And that's another out of network to. benefit because there are some insurances that do require a referral. Yeah. And so patients can come straight to us. We do communicate with the doctor still to like let them know, mm-hmm. hey, this patient's being seen, but you don't have to like take all those extra steps, yeah. which is nice. So we have a website, which I think, I don't know if you're attached to yep. Information yep, we will that. we'll put the information on, yeah. on the screen so that way people can stop it and they can visit your website yeah. and everything. But if yeah, the easiest thing to do is call. Um, yeah. With the website, it does route the information. So there's a contact button and that routes to our administrator and then she can contact you and call you. Okay. But phone call typically is the easiest way to communicate. And then you can also reach out through um, like the website and social media. We have uh, Instagram and a Facebook account. That is wonderful. And yes. are you currently looking to hire more employees yes. so you can plug that in here yes okay. yeah so we are in the process of interviewing a fourth okay. um and looking for a fourth therapist um if we move forward so we're currently considering a couple candidates right now mm-hmm. um if we move forward with one of them really our main limitation at that point is going to be space and mm-hmm. so at that point we'll probably be looking for a bigger location exactly. which will be awesome yeah. i was like if somebody in kingsport or bristol is very passionate about this yeah. and you want to help them start, yes. start an office there yeah. to reach more people in like yeah. the northeast tennessee southwest virginia area yeah um, we're, which we're is definitely really open we're open to like multiple locations bigger mm-hmm. space we also do a lot of collaborative care so we work with like do doulas, lactation okay. consultants, nutrition, personal training. And so we do a lot of referring out, that kind of thing as well, just to really give comprehensive care to patients. And so eventually we may look at some collaborative spaces yeah. that have all of those services, which would be really cool. I just learned so yeah. much about what, what you do. I, I thought I knew, but I mean, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was kind of crazy that all the things that you guys treat um, and I know there's so many men and women and children out there who suffer from it, but don't want to take the next step to call and reach out. Yeah. Um, and it's nothing that you should be embarrassed about at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's our body, right? So it's about taking care of ourself, um, taking care of our health, putting that first, um, yes. so you can live a happy, normal life, yes. um, have happy, normal, pain-free and leak-free. Yeah. Pain-free <laughs> and leak-free. <laughs> 
That should be your slogan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is there anything else that you want to share with people? Anything else that's important for you guys? Something that you just really, a message you want to get across? No. I mean, we're just, we're so happy to be able to deliver this service. And I think the big thing for us would just be, don't wait. Yeah. Like, Symptoms are common. That doesn't mean they're normal. Yeah. And don't wait till they're out of control to deal with them because the sooner you do something about it, generally the easier it is to take care of. I love that. Symptoms are common. That doesn't mean that they're normal. Yes. So one of my patients said I should get that tattooed on my head because I, I say it so much. Yeah. I mean, but it makes, <laughs> I mean, it makes complete sense. Yeah. So, and then in terms of social media, um, which I think we're attaching a link for that as well, mm-hmm. we do post weekly education. <gasps> and okay. so we post like we have, um, Fact Friday, and we do, I'm working on reels. They're, you know, a work in progress. <laughs> Love social media. I had to get a Facebook account just to start our social media. <laughs> so, um, working on that. But we do post weekly education. We also do monthly workshops. We have a workshop coming up. We try to do it kind of themed. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of this month, so May is Mental Health Awareness Month and mm-hmm. Women's Health Awareness Month. So, we're doing a collaborative workshop with Summit Counseling okay. at our office downtown Johnson City. You can sign up for the workshop on our website. It's free, but we just ask people to RSVP for space purposes. We can fit about 20 25 people in our clinic and, and so that? we're doing um we do wednesday night presentations once a okay. month basically and we talk about issues we see how they go hand in hand and so where we're doing a mental health physical health collaboration it's like how a lot of like perinatal anxiety and depression yeah. can affect women and like how the physical issues go hand in hand with that it's so intriguing and like even if it's something that you don't feel like is something that you are dealing with right now just the thought because I mean if if you're not your best friend is or your mom Mm -hmm. is or your aunt is or your little sister is I mean it's just I mean there's always going to be somebody so it's super intriguing yeah and so we're just we're just trying to grow more and more and so that's like offering the workshops and then the other thing we have that you can subscribe on our website is a monthly newsletter that also has like education and stuff like that in it Perfect. So definitely get on social media. We'll post that um, at the end of the episode. So actually, Polly, be right below here. Does this look good? <laughs> Marissa and Marissa's going to plug it in right here. Um, but definitely follow them on social media um, so you can stay up to date with um, any any uh, classes and things that you guys are doing. Also subscribe to the newsletter. Yeah. So thank you so much, Mel, for coming yes, on. I adore you. Me. I'm so proud of you. Thank I'm you so too. happy for you. I'm really glad that you're really uh, getting out there and helping the women and children and even men in our community. <laughs> even men, they need the most help. Yes, they do. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned next week for another episode of Selling Tri-Cities where we are selling more than homes. Ciao. If you are a small business owner or an entrepreneur and would like your business highlighted, please call 423-741-2564 or email aubrey.tellerico85 at gmail.com. We would love to showcase your business.